When the R9 Nano was released in 2015, it was something of an experiment. What happens when you put a thermal leash on a power-hungry flagship? The R9 Fury X was such a power hog that it came tethered to a water cooler, and yet AMD decided to take that same chip and ITX board and cool it with a single fan. It could have been awesome, but sadly was saddled the same flagship price for a lower performance. Fast forward four years, and now you can buy that same flagship for $125, 20% of what it used to cost. At that price, does this little ITX card that could still have game? Right off the bat, I should mention I swapped the fan on my Nano. The stock fan was never very quiet, so I decided to swap it out for something a bit more modern. This fan mod brought the noise level down a few decibels and gave the noise a lower pitch overall, but overall the performance is unchanged. The R9 Nano is so similar to the Fury X that some applications can't keep them straight. At stock clocks and plus 50% power, my R9 Nano scores an 84.4% in user benchmark and pairs well with a budget CPU like the 2200G. Running at stock would reduce performance by about 10%, but would run much quieter. On average, the R9 Nano should be an RX 590, 580, 570. The additional RAM may come into play in some games at higher resolutions, but in most cases you'll be limited first by the performance, that more than the RAM. It also comfortably beats the GTX 1060 and matches the 1060 non-TI model, though it largely depends on which games you play. Looking at some benchmarks, the Nano gets a 3221 in superposition, which is above the 2920 of the RX 590, and a 3018 of the GTX 1660. 24 FPS average is also ahead of the 23 FPS and 22 FPS of the 1660 and 590 as well. In time spot, the graphics score for the Nano comes in just above 5,000 points, which is just between the 1660 and the 590. This is more than enough performance to play any game at any resolution, provided you don't need ultra quality settings. Mainstream games like Overwatch easily play at over 100 FPS at 1440p, more than enough to make full use of a high refresh monitor. For more intense games like Anthem, 21 by 9 ultra wide gaming at console quality settings and performance is possible as well. And paired with a FreeSync monitor, the card keeps up well with even in intense situations. So should you get one? You can get a new RX 590 for under $250 now, and it does include three games. So if you are interested in those three bundled games, it might be a better option. A GTX 1660 runs for about $220 and should have equal or better performance and run cooler, though you aren't getting any games. If you can find an R9 Nano at $125, it's a real bargain. At the resolutions and settings that this card does well at, the 4GB of HBM don't hinder it and it has enough performance to play anything for the next couple years. It may not be the best card for everyone, but it's a great budget alternative. Thanks for watching guys, this is Elwich Low Tech and this has been a quick look at the AMD R9 Nano in 2019. Subscribe!